You there, wet one. Welcome to Canarty's Roost, friend. The hurricane must have been very disorienting. So many injured, confused. Keep your voice down. Try not to draw attention. Razumdar is here on a mission of some... Uh, delicacy. You are just what the Bandari ordered. Between your hands and Raz's good looks, we are certain to see this through. First, a question. Where did you come from? A Daedric prince, you say? Raz has a nose for lies, but you seem clean as an ocean breeze. Hm. If anyone else asks you, where will you say you came from? My, my, you're a focused one, aren't you? It is good to be focused, but it is also good right now to fit in. Your sudden arrival, it does not fit in, you understand? Just a friendly Khajiit, privileged to see someone drop from nowhere and land in sea. Shame you cannot do that at will. You could make piles of coins, sell tickets. You should not. You should trust your instincts. Live if you wish. No one will stop you. Or, come with Raz and do what you can to help us recover. In the process, grow your stature and wealth. It is entirely up to you. Because you are no soldier, which is useful. You can speak with the locals, assure them we are not invaders or marauders. Now come, let us try to fit in. you're up and about, recruit. I'm in need of a scout to head to Shattered Shoals. Most of our fleet foundered to the west, but we've had few survivors trickle in from that direction. We captured a sea viper spying on the camp. Those pirates never travel alone. Find out if they're around Shattered Shoals, and if so, what they're doing on this island. Of course, you should assist any shipwreck survivors you find. We must each do our part. Before you head to Shattered Shoals, speak with Eelsil. He just returned from exploring a nearby temple. That wizard claims to know something about everything, so he may have insight on how these sea vipers operate. Eelsil is this way. I'll be at this until I drop. Doesn't seem like I'm getting much done here. isn't it? We'll have to construct a special room for the Morning Stone when we bring it back to the Mages Guild. I'm sorry, did you need something? Yes. The Temple of the Morning Springs is an old Khajiit ruin not far from here. We excavated the Morning Stone from one of the chambers. As you can see, its supply of water appears endless. What do you mean? Pirates? In an ancient Khajiit temple? Preposterous! All we saw were the undead warriors that overran our camp. I have no idea. Actually, I have twelve ideas, but they're far less fascinating than the Morning Stone. Probably some sort of ancient curse. It usually is with these things. Arrogant sea elf pirates. To my recollection, they aren't known to raid Kanathi's roost. Oh, and they have a thing for snakes. But I'm sure we both have more important matters to attend. Uh, if you'd excuse me? We should speak privately. Before you depart, let's meet by the statues north of camp. There, you see? You fit in and no one will stop you from walking away. But, as this one said, there are opportunities here for people that fall from the sky. Ilseel is most impressed with his newest bubble. But the undead are a threat to all of Canarthi's roost. If you want to, you could search the Temple of the Morning Springs, determine how to contain the dead there, 
then the locals should see we came here as allies, not conquerors. Karanith told you how the hurricane dashed the fleet into Canarthi's roost. Now the sea vipers are picking at the bones of our ships. Strange, yes? You could scout the coast, as the commander said. Prove yourself to the soldiers. Oh, there's far less glamorous work to be done in Nistral, at the northern end of the island. Let's meet up there, after you've done what you decide to do. Until then, bright moons guide your steps. Nothing. Is this my doom then? To haunt this island, warning others of a danger I could not defeat? What a miserable non-existence. I paid the ultimate price for my hubris. Three books, each with the same curse. I thought myself strong enough to destroy them. But they are a trap for the weak-minded. Listen carefully. Can't you hear them call to you? How is this possible? If you are immune to their call, perhaps you could bring them to the shrine. You could finish what I did not. I know I ask much, but the books carry knowledge that is not for this world. They must be destroyed. The curse upon each tome is designed to feed souls to oblivion. But if you are able to resist their pull, you can collect the tomes and bring them to the shrine for their destruction. On the shores of Canarthi's Roost, beyond the town of Mistral, it is lit by an ever-burning flame. Should you collect all the tomes, bring them to the shrine without delay. No matter how strong you believe you are, I fear the tomes are stronger. All this wasted effort. First the hurricane, then rats from the sea. What next, flying mud crabs? Surrender's mercy. We need more time before the inspection. Dominion inspectors. Headwoman Harani requested their aid to stop smugglers. We're honest farmers with good customers. Our moon sugar is used to spice food, not to brew skooma. When the inspectors learn we can't protect our fields, we're finished. Hairy, squirmy, squeaky little rats. They've infested the plantation since the storm. The inspectors will ask, if we can't protect our fields from those dung-dropping sugar eaters, how can we protect them from skooma-brewing thieves? Find out why Cindertail's sench tigers roll on their backs instead of filling their bellies with rat. Does one expect to keep his job if the inspectors find vermin in our fields? At best, the inspectors will recommend our moon sugar be confiscated. To the east, a plantation burns. Was it due to the inspector's recommendations? Who can say? Either way, Mistral will weep for our passing. With laughing moons gone, skooma will flow through the streets. When moon sugar runs dry, people turn to smugglers. 
With smugglers come Skuma. But the inspectors aren't from here. If we tell them, they will not listen. Ha! You pull this one's tail, yes? A white powder, very sweet, used as spice for food. Some of us believe it gives true insight into Jokka where all fates are bound. Others use it to brew skooma. Poison. Skooma peddlers claim a single drop lets you escape from the world. It's because drinking the stuff makes you want to drink more of it, until you want nothing else. At best, the inspectors will recommend our moon sugar be confiscated. To the when moon sugar runs dry, people turn to find out why cinder tail cinch tigers roll on their backs instead of filling their bellies with rat. Does one expect to keep his job if the inspectors find vermin in our fields? Let the rats get the better of you? And you call yourself warriors? Want to buy a carpet? How about three? They aren't good for much else. Yes, Afe, even you. Do not eat the rats, this one says. Do they listen? No! Stupid sench. Lazy sench. Not with sugar bellies. These useless sench could only kill a rat if they fell upon it. From a great height. Go inside, lock the doors, wait until they leave? No. Let this one think. Without sench hunters, what could... Thunderbugs. <laughs> no, it would never work. Thunderbugs nest nearby. They defend their delicious eggs from anyone who'd make a meal of them, yes? If you grabbed an armload of eggs... Undoubtedly, but they'd hesitate to harm the eggs once you possess them. Smash an egg into each rat nest, and the Thunderbug's electric frenzy kills the rats before the inspectors arrive. You're sturdy, yes? A little shock won't stop you. Wonderful! Save some eggs for Cindertail, yes? They are so very tasty. There's no question, Jurandara. Your specialists certainly showed the vermin their place. Clever luring thunderbugs out of their mounds like that. A scheme worthy of Bandar himself. They're all gone then. Excellent. 
Our gracious inspector has been most patient with us. Perhaps witnessing your ingenuity will affect his findings. Joan and Joe dance kindly with you, Walker. Whatever the findings of our esteemed inspector, we are in your debt. Naturally. Will you be dining with us as well? Um, that will not be necessary. Kajishi Fair is too... cultural for my palate. Don't believe her lies. squad we were all in the little alkosh part of the dominion fleet sailing for kanathi's roost then a hurricane blew up out of nowhere sails tore hulls cracked and we were thrown into the ocean i ended up here i can't find the rest of my squad i thought i heard one of them calling out but the ocean twists up sounds if they're wounded or pinned down could you keep an eye out for my soldiers? They answer to Edelus, Anglon, and Nistel. Two of us can cover more ground. I'm sure my squad made it to shore alive. Dominion Marines constantly defy the sea's attempts to drown us. The hurricanes have another matter. I feel my squad is banged up worse than I am. Our ship's hold was packed full of an old Bosma healing remedy. The labels say Torchbug Treacle. But Marines call it glow juice. The wreck scattered bottles across the beach must be what brought out the eyelids. Squat creatures made of teeth, claws, and endless hunger. I've heard their cries up and down the beach since I came to. Their sweet tooth is bigger than their walnut brains. I saw one of the stupid things swallow a whole bottle of glow juice. Good luck. Do me a favor. If you find them before I do, Tell them the ocean hasn't killed me yet. Who are you? Were you part of the fleet? Alive? Good, that's good. Wave smashed me against the ship. Cracked a few ribs. Not the best feeling. I can manage. Talking makes me cough up blood. So I'll quit jabbering. Good. I'll find Sergeant Firion. Go. Get them back safe. I lost a lot of friends in that storm. Give me some good news. I saw her swept overboard in that damn storm. Held on to the rigging long as I could, but it tore the skin off my palms. If I can't hold a weapon, I'm useless to my squad. Do you have any bandages? I lost my kit to the sea. Blow juice? Used to think this stuff was only good for practical jokes on snowy days. Once I can heft Spleen Shanker, I'll push through the beach and find Sergeant Ferian. How about you? Hope they appreciate their good fortune when you find them. I can get inland after I rest. Fight with purpose.
My Sifra, I'm glad you came by. Have you seen any other marines along the beach? She's alive. I suppose that's some luck amidst all this wreckage. Can't say the same for my leg. If I don't put too much weight on it, I can manage a good hobble. Glow juice? By the gods, it just might. Soon as I can stand on my own, I'll head inland. Lieutenant Gellin dragged me out of the water. He'll want to know Sergeant Firion and the rest of the squad are all right. I think he said something about looking for shelter in a nearby cave, but I was still coughing up sand. Waning gibbous. Turns out my squad were the ones who found me. Ever consider a career as a Dominion Marine? You'd make quite a scout. My squad said you were looking for Lieutenant Gellin. Have you found him? What do you mean? First a hurricane blows out of nowhere and destroys our fleet. Then an able-bodied Dominion Marine is captured and tortured to death? What else was in that cave? Some kind of sacrifice? This is too big for my squad to handle. We need reinforcements. Nistel spotted a beach ship nearby. It looks intact, and she spotted Dominion sailors aboard. We need to combine our forces and find who murdered Lieutenant Gellin. My squad and I need to pull his body out of that damn cave. Would you warn the sailors on that beach ship? They need to know it's not safe to wander around. Good. The squad's wounds are slowing him down, but we'll be along shortly. Want a slick arsed sea viper or a cabbage mouth castaway? State your business with the crew of the Prowler. The hurricane killed hundreds of Marines. Why does it matter if one of them died in the cave? Oh. Well, the Prowler is like a hen in a wolf den until she's seaworthy again. Maybe your Marines can prove they're more than two legged cargo and shiny armor. If they pitch in, I'll consider reinforcements. Are they up for it? Or are they all talk? And I'm sure they'll be as useful as they were in the hurricane. Should they care to prove otherwise, they're welcome to do actual work patching leaks in the Prowler's hold. Maybe they can locate the replacement helmsman's wheel in all this wreckage. Oh, and our Sun Sighter. It must have fallen overboard when we beached. Our lookout saw those skink-fingered pirates make off with it. You'll have to get the Sun Sighter back, any way you can. Sure, talking's easier than working. Well, 
that Ask will float. the pride of the long coast. We'll sail for the Dominion as long as they pay us to raid enemy shipping. Captain Jimela took over the Prowler a few years ago. She's smart, cunning, and deadly dangerous when provoked. She's also luckier than anyone I served. Every ship in the fleet smashed to flinders on Kenarthi's roost. Every ship but the Prowler. Joan and Jod, don't let the captain hear you say that. Pirates steal and pillage for themselves. We're privateers, so we do it for whoever pays us. A crucial distinction. Barnacles on the arse, and they're all sea elves. Malmer, they call themselves. Nothing more than pirates, if you ask me. Some say they have a connection to the water itself, but it's a lie. Anyone can learn weather magic like they do. Captain Jimela uses it to navigate. I could tell you how the sun and stars show the ship's exact position, but none of it matters while it's in the Sea Viper's hands. These aren't Dominion sailors. They're privateers. Just our luck. We'll show that old sea cat what Dominion Marines can do. Nustel is as good with a mallet as she is with a sword. I can never patch the Prowler's leaks. She'll have those leaks fixed in no time. What else? Onglorn is our best tracker. He can recover the Sun Sider in no time. I almost pity the Sea Viper who's holding on to the Sun Sider. Onglorn will recover it soon enough. What else needs doing? All right. I appreciate what you've done for us. We'll keep the Prowler safe while you take care of the rest. That was fast. All right. There's room on the prowler for your marine friends, as long as they work for their meals. I said I'd consider it. Captain Jimela is the only one who can make that call. Something you'll want to hear. You just made the prowler seaworthy, and Captain Jimela always pays her debts. Go talk to her. She only bites if you give her good reason. Due to your efforts, the Prowler is free to sail once the tide comes in. Those Marines did their part as well. I have no reinforcements, but I offer something better. I know who's killing the Dominion soldiers, and I know how to stop it. Our lookout watched the Sea Vipers drag a Dominion Marine into a cave. Later, he saw your friends remove the Marine's body. If we weren't so short-handed, I'd have ordered his rescue. But three of my own crew were missing. Before we understood the danger, I sent my crew to scavenge among the shoals so we might repair the Prowler. We thought they disappeared, but one just returned, and she tells a harrowing tale. The Sea Vipers happened. Now there's a new storm brewing, and I fear they're the cause of it. Mustangui recovers below. 
Hear what she has to say for yourself. Vipers are insane! They're trying to create another hurricane! Sir Verkvild and I were scavenging for a replacement helmsman's wheel when the Sea Vipers ambushed us. They brought us to the island with the beached Dominion flagship. They'd done things there. Terrible things. Those filthy Maurmur dragged my mates up and tied them to these serpent-shaped statues. Then they started chanting and lightning surrounded them. That's when the storm began to form around the island. Yes, I'm sure of it. It was a terrible sight. The sea vipers were so caught up in the ritual, I slipped free. I tried to grab Sir, but the lightning held him fast. Then one of the sea vipers yanked at him. I saw the mouth of Maulmur wore lodestones on their wrists. It let them ignore those lightning bombs, but I couldn't find any more. So I jumped off the ship and swam for it. Please, don't let them sacrifice my crewmates. Vipers are insane! Sur and Workfield return just after the sky is cleared up. They're a bit damp, but otherwise all right. My lookout says I have you to thank. Then we'll finish repairs and shove off at high tide. 
Oh, your marine friends fended off sea vipers while you rescued my crew. They're welcome aboard, as long as they want. Perhaps we'll see you at Mistral. You'll always have a place on the Prowler. This is horrible. The spirit wasn't any help. The great tree can't last much longer against the vapor. I came here from Windcatcher Plantation to see if the storm caused any damage. Then I noticed the great tree covered in some sort of fetid vapor. I rushed back and told Spinner Beneath. She summoned a spirit to help, but I don't think it worked. Some sort of nature spirit. It entered the cave where the great tree's roots emerge, but something's wrong. I heard horrible noises inside the cave. The spirit cried out as if in pain. The great tree will die if the spirit can't do its work. I want to heal the great tree, but I'm just a farmer. If something is keeping that spirit from mending the roots, there's nothing I could do to help. The spirit is old and powerful. It seeks to move from root to root, aiding the great tree as it's able. But it's a healing spirit of singular purpose. It doesn't know how to defend itself. I'm uncertain. If so, the spirit must be protected from harm while it heals the great tree's roots. It knows what it must do. The great tree shields Windcatcher Plantation from the winter winds and keeps our settlement shaded from the heat of the summer. Its story entwines with ours. When the wind goddess Kanathi first traveled across the heavens, legend says she grew tired and rested in the branches of a small sapling before resuming her journey. That sapling became the great tree and gave Windcatcher Plantation its name. Been a Quarma master for over a decade. I'm not afraid to admit when I'm up to my neck in droppings, and I sure could use a hand getting out. Ever try piloting a ship through a hurricane while your entire cargo of Quarma eggs hatch and go bug nuts? Been there. Can't recommend it. After we wrecked, they made a Quarma line toward this cave. I came after them, but they're a bit distracted. They always get surly after hatching, but these Quarma are downright unsociable. I tried to stop them from chewing on those huge roots. <laughs> they objected. Bumped into a fine-looking tree trunk on my way out. Thought I was done for, but it kept walking. Oh, and Kwama didn't take to it, whatever it was. I heard them munching on it, same as those roots. Mm, the little ones seemed scared of it. If you can help the pretty tree trunk do what it needs to do, I bet they'll head back this way. If they'd stop eating those giant roots, they might get better. But I don't blame you if you have to put down a few to save the rest. Just be careful. Nothing fiercer than a crazed Quama. Not even my sister-in-law.
praise Ifrei. The miasma has cleared. Yet I sense this begins a new chapter for the great tree. Though the creatures gorge themselves upon its roots, this was a passing instinct. They can be taught to strengthen the great tree. The Kwama will soon learn the cave is their nest and treat the spirit as their queen. Together, they'll guard the cave against intruders who seek to harm the great tree. A new story can frighten any creature until it realizes its role within. Yeah! <laughs> 